tip of the tongue, teeth in the lips. Dude, School of Rock is on Netflix now. Oh, that's a game changer. So I right. was definitely going to be watching that. Yeah. Once a month at least until it's gone. Oh, yeah. I just love the... Um, when he he talks about... Sorry, I have to leave something in it. It was still there. Uh, he's like... And then a thin layer of fog wraps around my ankles. Roadies, that means dry ice. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm thinking... You have middle school kids handling dry ice. Like, that is dangerous. Um, like, the the dry ice will burn you. And so the fact he's going to have, like, these, what, fifth and sixth graders handle dry ice, so he has a thin layer of fog wraps around my ankles. Oh, my gosh. Dude. I can quote that whole movie. Oh, yeah. It's really disgusting how, how many movie quotes I have stored up in my noggin. If I got paid to do that... I thought maybe I'd just change my whole TikTok to just movie quotes. Yeah. But I'd have to do all the voices. It'd be a good angle. Be really good at it. I've seen really good McConaughey voices too. I'm like, oh, mine's not that good. And if you never try, you never know. Come on. Oh, God. Okay. All right, coach. <laughs> hey, but that movie though, apart from it being hilariously funny, the lessons behind it about like not listening to like, well, I'm not saying not listen to your parents, but like, just because your parents don't, like, approve of what you're doing doesn't mm -hmm. mean you should, like, go after it, like, be passionate about it. Because there are a lot of kids in that movie that were, like, wanting to do things 100%. that they were good at, but they were, like, afraid of what their parents thought. Yeah. So you got that little subtle lesson highlighted in the back. But, uh, dang, the, the kid who plays the lead guitar, his dad just only wanted him to play classical, like, no more classic rock, all this. Yeah. And then he writes this banger hit that they end up performing at the yeah. end. He's like, no more secret songs, okay? From now on, you share with the rest of the band. <laughs> Jack Black, one of his best. He's like, come on, man, someone's pushing you around. What do you say? I don't know. Come on, dude. someone's up in your grill. What do you say? I don't know. Come on, someone's really letting you have it. Step off. Step off! Step off! Step off! <laughs> yeah. She's so Jack, good. Jack Black. But yeah, Netflix, okay. Yeah. Um... There's, there have been some good things on Netflix recently. Also, it was Stefan while I'm cooking, Lincoln Lawyer. Oh, mm -hmm. Speaking of McConaughey, it's one of my top three favorite movies that mm -hmm. he's done. Yeah. Lincoln Lawyer is real good. Yeah. Real good. Mouse the Palace, they just have a one hour documentary on that. The Indiana Pacers. Oh, I've watched that. Yeah. Dude. Pretty interesting. Um, yeah, I've seen both sides of it. Yeah. What I thought was crazy is how they look at the security tapes and they were like, you, you go to an NBA game today, and you look at the amount of police officers that are standing around the court now. Mm -hmm. There at that building, there were only three that were present in the entire building. Whole building. When, when that was going on. And you like look at the footage about the, the fans coming onto the court when, when there was like fighting going on. There's not like a police officer in sight. It's literally just like a mass of people. Mm -hmm. And it's just crazy like what that event did and the precedent that it set for like police officer presence at games going forward. Yeah. But yeah, dude, it's crazy. And they even interviewed the guy who threw, what was it, like a, it was a bottle, water bottle yeah. or something? And like, he he was so happy with himself. Oh, like, you fuck this guy. Yeah, he's going on, on like TV doing interviews and stuff. He was so happy with himself. And then the guy next to him is who Ron Artest went after. Yeah, the so guy that came even... on, the, one of the first fans that came onto the court. And Ron just like, and he had like a clenched fist, and like Ron just has like punched him. Him too. They had him in, in interviews as well. But yeah, him too. And then, but the guy who Ron Artest attacked in the stands first oh, was yeah. next to the guy who threw yeah, the ball. Yeah, it wasn't even the guy. wrong dude. And that guy just let it happen. He was so pleased. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, this dude's a joker, man. Like, fuck yeah. this guy. I was watching that game in my living room, it was, uh, November 2004, and man, I was like crying because I knew that like. And they were talking about the documentary. Like, that team was one of the best Patriots teams in the so so they were They had the best record in the NBA at the time. They were, like, they were contenders, and, and then that happens. But, yeah. yeah. And then they talk about the media, like, how after, like, the event happened, the 48 hours after, how, like, the whole media was, like, pointing the finger at the play. Like, they were making it, like, the player's fault, the player's fault. Mm -hmm. And, like, Jermaine O'Neal said that he didn't even have a conversation with David Stern, who was the NBA commissioner at the point. Mm -hmm. They had to just like sit there in the background while everybody was blaming it on them, and then no communication with the office, and they get the suspensions handed down. Yeah, 
They just outlandish. Yeah, they like just, they got a raw deal. Yes, out of they, they deserve some type of punishment, but they that punishment did not account for all of the facts. Mm-hmm. It was only, it was what the clickbait was. Yeah, you know, it's like oh, NBA player attacks fan in the stands. It's like okay, but he was minding his own his own business. Granted, yeah, laying on the scores table, okay. That's a little weird. Kind of an asshole move, but it's Ron Artest. Yeah. And it's like, he didn't say anything to anyone. Yeah, it's kind of a dick move, but he's just laying on the scores table. And he to go in. In in the documentary, he explains why he laid on the scores table. Mm -hmm. Because, like, at that time, he 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 was seeing a therapist or a psychiatrist or a therapist or something. Yeah. That would, like, travel with them, with the team all the time. And he said that he was channeling what his therapist or psychiatrist told him to do. Oh, yeah, situations like, like breath or... Take a breath for five seconds. So he said yeah. he was just doing it. He was doing that, except, like, on an exaggerated level. But it's just Yeah, and it's like... Crazy. Look, man, that's... Yes, I believe he was doing part of that. Other side, he was... He was instigating, like, yeah. the other team. He yeah. wasn't trying to go at fans doing that. Like, it was... It's part of the game. Mm-hmm. If you think every player doesn't talk some shit, you're ignorant to it. Right. Like, they're, they're all John. Um, but, yeah, they definitely got the short end of the stick on that one. Mm-hmm. But good documentary. I was bummed yeah. it was only an hour. Right. But. Could have yeah. been more. But. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's, oh. And some of those guys just never bounced back after. No. Like, that was, that was it. Yeah. When they could have probably had very fruitful careers Right. Had they only been suspended a handful of games. Yeah. But. Yeah, Jermaine O'Neal got the raw end out of it because Ron Artest ended up winning a championship with the Lakers in like 09 or 2010. And then Mm -hmm. Steven Jackson won one with the Spurs. But yeah, Jermaine O'Neal, who was actually like the best player on that team at the time and the leader of the team, he's the one that got the worst out of it because he never ended up winning anything. Yeah. Then who who is the guy who's like, he was all about just getting his his players back. So he goes, man, I don't care. Like, I'll get you back. Like, whatever it is. So Steven Jackson. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, man, I, I, like, I like him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, that team was so good. I remember. Yeah, I mean, one could say David was a little too stern. Yeah. <laughs> Benedict. <laughs> uh, uh. Dude, Ben Polizzi, man. I'm going to try to reach out to him again. He is, he's on fire. Yeah. When he did you see his uh his Johnson voice doing the lady fingers joke? He's like no. <clears throat> What's the opposite of lady fingers? And then he holds up a roll of Mentos. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was at CBS the other day getting some stuff and uh, I just see this roll of Mentos and I just start cracking up. Like <laughs> I just think of that video and I just start losing it. Yeah. I was bummed he didn't he had that one post where he's like, "Hey, give me some good jokes in the in the comments." And I had, oh, what was it? Was it like it was something with bees? Oh, he had the hives on his face, mm-hmm. and I thought I had a great one, like perfect for a Johnson voice. I even write in brackets like, "Got to use the Johnson voice," <laughs> and so it's I mimic a quick like four line dialogue, like, "Wait, hold on, hold on, how do you, how do you spell that?" Okay, all right, I got it. And when I'm writing this down, is that hive anated? <laughs> and I thought I crushed. I thought I crushed. No Maybe love. Maybe he just didn't see the comments. No love. Dude, I don't know. If you're <laughs> asking people to throw a joke in your comments, you're going to peruse yeah, the comments. Yeah, yeah. Like, Herford saw it. Yeah. And he gave me some love. And yeah. I was like, thank you. Thank you. Where? <laughs> Thanks. Are you not entertained? Yeah. Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? So, see, there I go again. What a habit I have. Um, but, anyway, Pacers, how do you think they're going to do this season? Uh, I think they'll be all right. I think they'll be, like, four to eight seed in the East. They'll okay. sneak into the playoffs. Do you think that's respectable for yeah. what they're doing? Yeah. Okay. I've kind of accepted as a Pacers fan that we're, like, a playoff team that makes it to, like, the first or second round and gets bounced out. Unless we draft, like, another – if we draft, like, a Giannis or we draft someone who's, like, really good out of the draft. But mm-hmm. Man. The thing about Indiana is, like, we're a basketball state and, like, passionate about basketball and we're going to take our basketball seriously. But 
it's just not we're never gonna really get any blue chip free agents just because it's it's not like a big market team. Yeah, we don't we don't draw we don't no. draw the LeBron James. It's just the way it is. is. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's unless we trade for someone. It's like, Indiana basketball, but it's still just Indiana. Yeah, you know? unless we like trade for someone for like a win now mentality. Like uh, yeah, we'll see though. I, I, uh, I like watching them. Rick Carlisle's back, the coach. Okay, you like him? Yeah, I think he's good. I was bragging about your your ability to. Who was I telling about this? Buddy of mine. Uh, oh, my buddy Matt from the gym. I was bragging about your ability to tell at any given time any player's contract <laughs> because he was. We were watching. It was the opening day of college football, and. I'm going to say this, but I've talked to my good friend Kyle about it too, and he even agrees Notre Dame is ranked far too high. Mm -hmm. Like for, we were just at the Toledo game, exciting game, but if you're ranked that high, I think what, they're an eight or something, you should win handedly. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, he was like, man, who you got like an NBA team? And I was like, yeah, we're for so-and-so and so-and-so. I like college a lot, big Duke fan, obviously a Butler fan. I was like, man, but I grew up in the J.J. Redick era, like him, Greg Paulus, like that team. And he's like, man, J.J. Redick kind of kind of sucks in the league. I was like, no, no, he sucked his first few seasons because Magic wouldn't give him time of day because they were all on Turkaloo. Mm -hmm. And he was getting too old on his way out. And I was like, dude, my buddy Tim, because he's like, "What's who's J.J. Redick play for? And I didn't even know he got traded to the Mavs. Yeah. And I was like, dude, Redick is getting paid. He's on his like third or fourth contract where it's one or two seasons for over 20 mil. Yeah. And he's on like, uh, I think two seasons with the Mavs for like 24 or 26. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, a, that's about right. Boy is getting paid. Yeah. Well, that's, I love to see it. Go JJ Reddit. I mean, man. if you're, if like, think about like, if you're a shooter who can like somewhat defend, you're going to be in the league for a long time. And shooting is one of those things where, like, yeah, if you're an NBA player and you're going to be in the league for long, you need to be in good shape. You need to be strong. You need to be, like, physically. But, like, shooters, like, shooters more of, like, mental, like, confidence, just, like, repetition, like, mechanics. Like, you don't need to be, like, a physical specimen to be a good shooter in the NBA. Right. That's why, like, yeah, people like J.J. Redick and, like, right, yeah. Ty Tyler Hero, who's a young player for the Heat right now, like, yeah. People are like, oh, like that dude's gonna be in the league for a while. Like, yeah, he is because he he knows how to shoot. He knows how to score. Yeah, the, you don't need to be like the biggest dude in the league. And Reddick's got a fast shot too. He's yeah, quick on that. Release. He he found his niche. He found his groove, and yeah, he's made a lot of money. Here is yeah, yes, good grief. He's got an okay podcast. Yeah, yeah, he's got a good voice. I mean, he's got a he's got a good voice for podcasting. Yeah. Um, all right. That Duke education. He, Damn straight. Yeah. I'm sure he went to most classes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of the most popular college players. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's get into it, man. Yeah, you got you got some good business updates. You had some oh, new yeah. things happen. We oh, some, yeah. We got some good business updates. My website is up. Website is live. Website is up. Shout out to John Swanson out of Lafayette, Indiana. Uh, building my website for me. He did. Is, that, is he from Parks and Rec? <laughs> no, not Ron, John. <laughs> oh, excuse me, excuse me. John, yeah. I was oh, his cousin. Yeah, I, cousin grew, I grew up with, with him at Warsaw. He did a very fine job and great value from him. He's He got to turn around very quickly. And I advise anybody, if you need a website bill, uh, reach out to me and uh, I'll connect you guys because he, he would love to help you out. He's really good at what he does. But yeah, and people were like, oh, have you got any clients from the website? Like, yeah, like I have people like reach out here and there, but one of the reasons for the, the website was not to get clients right away because I'm, I, I'm good there, but I want to get like more credibility established. Um, I want people to start taking me seriously because I'll get into that here a little bit, but as I reach out to people, um, like universities and like recruiting companies, like bigger entities, I want to have something in place that besides my LinkedIn profile shows that like, yeah, I'm, I'm taking this really seriously. So it's good to have that up. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, lo I'm loving it. it. It'll be good. It'll, allow, it'll give me a platform to get my blog going, uh, put, put more content out and just have a place where I can send people. So yeah. And like the, right now. Um, it looks good. By yeah. Way. It looks yeah. really nice. It's yeah. smooth. It's crisp. Um, I checked it on on the mobile version too. And it, 
it just it flowed well. Yeah. For someone who doesn't create websites, so take for what it's worth, I thought it looked really nice. Yeah. And it's good to just have like on like real estate online now. That's how I look at it. Like yeah. I'm, I'm online, I'm out there, like it's it's just another it's another step of the journey. It, it, it keep it keeps me going. So mm-hmm. and then yeah, my other update is like I don't know, I mean I've been updating you and people in my circle, but one thing I wanna do is I wanna start doing <laughs> I wanna start doing I wanna start doing like uh, like public speaking and like work like resume writing workshops and interview prep workshops for like college students and like younger people or people who are like looking for jobs. Mm-hmm. So uh, I finished creating like a PowerPoint a presentation that I wanna start like giving out. Um, and I've been reaching out to universities like all across the country of say like, hey, this is what I do, this is my presentation, like this is like would you be open to speaking with me about this? So I've been kind of just like putting feelers out. Nothing yet. I, I know that I'm not going to get like immediate response. I got to be persistent, proactive with it. Um, so yeah, I've been doing that. And then, yeah, that's kind of my other update. And I guess going forward, I'm going to keep continuing to reach out to them. And um, business cards are the next step. Now that I have my yeah. website, I can put the website on my business card. And yeah, things are going really well, man. I'm, 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 I have the, the workload is good. Uh, the, the business side of it is good. Um, I'm just trying to continue to like really be more like mindful about my work, continue to like perfect my craft. Cause like at the end of the day, like I'm creating, I, I liked your, your compliment that you, you gave me after the, the resume I did for you in terms of like, Oh yeah. It's, it's good to see I'll you. I'll put that on LinkedIn. Yeah, it's good to see you like, see your, your art in action or whatever, something like that. So I'm really trying to be more mindful about really making sure my environment is like in perfect condition when I sit down to write, um, yeah. not, not rushing anything. I'm not saying I do, but I just want to make sure that each person's resume, like is very important to them. So mm-hmm. I need to make every single session I sit down important, just as important to me. So that's yeah. kind of what I'm focusing on. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll write that on LinkedIn. Is your business registered on Google yet? Not yet. Should do that so oh, yeah, Google man. reviews. Yeah. Um, that's one thing I just started doing and asking people for Google <clears throat> reviews because it's huge. Like, even if you only have 10, um, you know, people Google for you know, the resume writing or, you know, interview prep. Even if they see 10 reviews, but it's all five stars, mm-hmm. okay, it's better than like zero, zero re- reviews, zero stars. Man, say that fast. Um, where, yeah, and it, and it takes, I don't know, 20 minutes to do the online portion max, Mm -hmm. if that, like probably 10, honestly, and then they'll physically mail you something that Mm -hmm. you just, you open it like, and you activate it. Yeah. And then it's within like, so you'll get it mailed within three to five business days, you activate it, you're good to go. And then Mm -hmm. people like, it'll show up on Google. Yeah. So yeah, I'd, I'd recommend doing that too. I like that. That's super quick and easy. Yeah. Um, that's cool, man. Yeah, that's that's exciting to see. It's it's scaling, mm-hmm. right? Uh, have you? Are you just now reaching out to universities in Indiana? Are you just you know Indiana, Michigan, Illinois, like surrounding? Pretty states? much, yeah, pretty much like everywhere. Like I've I've started reaching out to like cities that I want to travel to nearby. So okay. I've reached out to like since people in Cincinnati, people in Nashville. Um, I want to, today I'm actually going to do like Evans, anything like the Evansville area, like Southern Indiana. Um, but yeah, like I'm not limiting it. I mean, I'm going to start with Indiana and the surrounding states, yeah. but I don't want to limit Like I want to, like I want to fly some places and, and yeah. I mean, whatever, whatever I need to do to travel. Like I just, the goal here is that like, I've helped a lot of people in the last year, but I think just the more people I can reach, the better. And mm-hmm. I feel like if I can give like public speaking is a great way to do that because I'm I'm doing I'm presenting to a group. So the more people yeah. I can help at once, like the better. So I just I want to have a greater impact. And I really do think and I'm trying to stress this like when I reach out to these colleges, like I'm because I'm like younger. I know that can seem like I don't have as much experience, but I think it's an asset because I can relate to people better because they're closer mm. to my age. And yeah. I mean, I've, I've helped hundreds of people who are just graduating school. So I think it's better to, to talk to someone who can relate to them better. Mm. Um, and hopefully that people can see that value. So I'd agree. Yeah. That's in, I haven't thought about that as much obviously as you have, but you know, you hear guys have been in the, workforce 30 40 years trying to tell a 
kid still in college, that kid in college is like, yeah, yeah, what do you know? Like, you're not me. Like, you were me 30 years ago. So, yeah, it's cool that you're recently out of college. I mean, it's been a few years, but you still know, hey, when you get out of college, this will happen. This is what real life is actually like. Yeah. And you're not going to be in one job, you know, forever. Mm -hmm. You're going to be in five, six, seven, eight jobs. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, not like at people all. think that's an people are like I talk to people who are like kind of like ashamed of that, but no, it's not like unless you're especially around. especially younger in your career, it's important to find out like what you don't, what you like, and what you don't like. I mean, you don't want to like get stuck on a path that like you, you're not even in love with, but you like don't take the time to look elsewhere. Then then like the longer you wait, the more you'll get stuck. I'm not saying you can you get stuck forever, but. And you can always make the change, but I think it's good to try different things early. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, my dad kind of told me, him, some other people, you know, if, if you're going to jump around jobs, give it like two years max. After two years, you kind of have an idea of what the role is, what the growth can be like or not. Mm -hmm. To where, you know, if, if someone sees you're in this place for six months, you're in this place for one year, then you're in this place for eight months then they might get nervous and you might not be as employable to them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, year and a half, two years, it goes by pretty quick. Yeah. So get a good feel for it. But yeah, move on if it's time to move on. Right. So I like it, man. I like it a lot. Um, so business cards, mm -hmm. as you said, that's your next thing. Yeah. Yeah. Have you thought about like, are you going to do, because I've thought about this too, just having one business card with on the bottom, like, podcast host, nutrition coach, like kind of like the executive card, right? Or are you going to yeah. are you going to tailor it just to cuz I know you kind of treat your social media as that's just your personal brand. So you'll post about resume writing, you know, the interview prep, you'll post about golf, you post about investments, or is it do you think you're just going to have it tailored just for the resume? That's stuff? a good question. I I do want to add like the podcast part of it too, but at the same time I'll probably like when I put the website, I'll put my website on there, mm -hmm. but under like my descriptor, I might put resume writer, career coach and podcast host and maybe put that in there. The executive business card. Yeah. That's it. I never thought about that, but. Oh, yeah. plug, plug your website so people can, can go check it out. What's your website? TimAllersMeyer.com. A-H-L-E-R-S-N-E-Y. E R. Wow, that's a good podcast partner. Tim he knows how to spell my last name. Let's go. Com. Been been around the block a few times. I've been it's tough. Yeah. It's tough to spell sometimes. People still call me a slogger. Slogger. <laughs> slogger. I was like, Isn't oh. that how you pronounce it? Like in Dutch, yeah. In Dutch, yeah. Because it means butcher. Yeah. Um but yeah, uh, Americanized it's a long A. Slager. Do you ever feel inclined to cheer for the Netherlands in the World Cup? Oh I do. Okay. Oh, you know. That, that's oh, okay. why I cheer for the Netherlands. Oh yeah, he's he's got like all the jerseys back in the. <laughs> so when um uh oh, I just slipped his name. He was Robin uh Van Persie. Van Persie. Yeah, yeah. he's good. But Robin he was. O Robin always shot up the side. And no one could catch him. Yeah. No one would ever catch him. Oh, I'd always play uh, with him on Bayern Munich on the uh, the FIFA game. But Van Persie. Uh, Okay, there we go. They tried to let me turn my Bluetooth off. They tried to connect to my AirPods. Stupid technology. Um, yeah, but oh, Ben Percy, he's also kind of a pretty boy, you know. And so I'm like self-proclaimed kind of a little bit of a pretty boy. I'll admit it. Mm -hmm. So connect with him on that. But I started cheering for the Netherlands originally because yeah, we're Dutch. Like we still have family over there. Mm -hmm. um, I grandparents uh, got to visit them probably five or six years ago and my brother and I so we have some spots we want to hit for Formula One races like we'd like to go to Miami Texas would be cool but I would love to go to the Netherlands Grand Prix mm -hmm. one it's for Stoppen's home course because he's Dutch as well the Dutchman the Dutchman um, but I told my brother I was like hey in the next year or two let's make a trip you know to the Netherlands around the Grand Prix, but let's go for maybe 10 days, stop and visit the family over there, then have our own little mini brocation and, and go watch guys drive Formula One cars.